Here we are, starting, starting, and we are live now. And of course, uh, if you're watching this webcam, I am on delay again because my wonderful AT&T U-verse is super slow. I will soon be fixing that because I'm tired of the fact that I say something and then it, my mouth sounds like it's a bad Chinese movie uh, doing kung fu or something. So we're going to get that fixed here momentarily when I upgrade my internet service. But for right now, uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Abel Ramirez, a.k.a. Bonavest, and uh, I trade bitcoins. Um, I have a couple of guests already uh, coming into the call. Uh, Adam and John are here with me. Uh, if you'd like to connect with me, I'm on Twitter at Bonavest, B-O-N-A-V-E-S-T. You can also uh, get in touch with us and join our community on uh, Google+. Uh, the name of the community is Bitcoin Trading Advice and News. You can find us there. Uh, there are several different chat rooms that we try to keep our eye on during the call, so if you're tuning in live with us on the live stream, uh, feel free to ask questions. You might want to put some asterisks uh, first in your uh, chat so we can recognize it. But uh, a couple of places we're looking at right now is chat.coinauthority.io. We also uh, use the uh, chat room inside btccharts.com. That's btccharts.com. And recently we've been hanging out in the... Uh, uh, what is it? Uh, tradingview.com, which has some excellent charts that uh, I'm really starting to enjoy using the uh, indicators. So that's tradingview.com, and we use the chat room in there as well. So if you're uh, joining with us live on the live stream, feel free to ask questions in there. We'll try to keep an eye on there. Uh, if you're actually with a Google Plus account, we have the Q&A uh, section that you can actually enter in questions, which is really handy for me to keep track of all the questions. Uh, and if you're viewing it through Google Plus's interface after the fact, you can actually click on those questions and it'll take you exactly to the moment in the video where I actually answer that question. So that's pretty nifty. Um, all right, well, let's get started. John or Adam, how's it going? <laughs> good, man. How are you? Oh, it is good. It is good to be back and uh, doing the Hangouts. Yeah, I bet. Are you back at home now? Um, yeah, I am uh, back at the uh, global uh, headquarters of uh, the Bonavest Data Center. Yes, I am. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> Cranking out uh, 0. .000850 megawatts of uh, internet computing power. <laughs> Eugene, Eugene is uh, checking in. What's up? What's up? So some really cool things over the uh, Christmas holidays. A lot of cool stuff happened while I was, uh, was quote, away, even though I was actually tuning into looking at all the charts and stuff. Um, Christmas morning, woke up, uh, or I shouldn't say I woke up, stupid. I was, I was just going to sleep at like 5 in the morning, and things blew up at like 4 or 5 o'clock on uh, Christmas morning as Santa uh, had a late delivery, and uh, I jumped on the LTC train that morning and rode it up for about 16% uh, gain there, so that was pretty nice. You mean the train that's happening right now? Oh, is there something happening right now? <laughs> I don't know. I'm 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 looking at the LTC right now. Yeah, it's kind of kind of been sideways a little bit. It almost scared me enough to say, oh, I screwed up. I shouldn't have gotten in." But nah, I'm just holding on, waiting. There's no big. There's no reason for a big drop, so we should be good. What? How long are you waiting till? What's your number? Uh... I don't yeah. really have a number. I, I've been looking. I really have been putting a lot of faith in the Ichimoku cloud. So uh, you know, I'm kind of watching that. Like uh, right here, this is LTC dollar, and uh, I'm just kind of watching. This is on the hourly. Obviously, on the uh, 15 minute, it looks like we've already passed through some support here. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, it's hanging in because uh, the first first line is the first line of support. Second one's the second line of support. So it actually looks like it's been holding really true to that second line there. So. I think we're in good shape. I'm going to hang on and see what happens. <laughs> so we're trying to get some more viewers in here because I kind of want to direct this uh, this hangout a little bit with uh, uh, a type of a theme or a focus because lately we do these hangouts and they last for like you know four hours and it's like we're all over the place and I'm trying to limit the amount of time I'm on the hangout because man, I really got to get other stuff done. <laughs> It's like I gotta eat, I gotta wash clothes, I gotta like actually get enough sleep so I can go to work in the morning. Survive. Like, exactly. It's starting to catch up to me. So, uh, <laughs> but I'm hoping to get some more viewers. We've got 20 viewers right now, uh, steadily increasing here, and uh, we're gonna talk about money management and maybe like the percentages that we go for on some of these trades. 
uh, stuff like that. So I think it'll be pretty interesting for some of the people that are out there that are kind of questioning uh, how do they get some squeeze some profits out of each trade. So if you're in like the troll box on BTCE or something like that, or maybe you're on Reddit or uh, IRC chat, feel free to post up a link in there or mention that we, there's a hangout going on, see if we can get some more viewers in here, and we'll uh, start answering some questions. Actually, I'm going to type in the trading view chat, see if anybody here has any questions in particular. I got a question. Yes, sir. <clears throat> I think uh, I was on Reddit today, and I saw an article saying – it was an article about somebody who was considering writing a trading bot, and they were asking the Reddit audience what features they would want to see in the Reddit bot. And as I read through the comments, I saw a lot of people saying that um, – that the, this person who was a developer had written different types of bot configurations and had back tested it against, you know, months and years worth of data. In that, none of the strategies that he was able to program could match or even come close to matching just buying and holding. And so that made me think about what we're doing here. And I was just wondering if if you guys could maybe offer up. Um, some feedback about your own story about the advantages of trading actively versus just trying to find good entry points to buy and, and holding on to what Bitcoin you have. Okay, so like um, you're you're just kind of looking to see like what we do as far as uh, the strategy as far as hold uh, like building BTC as opposed to like maybe just looking at straight dollar profits and things like that. Yeah, or also just looking at. Um, you know, maybe, maybe I guess the the gist of what I got through the comments was that actively trading this stuff it just isn't profitable unless you're incredibly lucky or or brilliant. It's just not even worth it, and I, it just didn't feel right to me, based on my own experience. And I was just wondering, you know, if you guys had a, a similar type of feeling. Well, uh, I mean, I think that goes into what Bonavest's whole plan is. He's all about building BTC rather than USD. So if you're focused on, you know, making USD, then I think a lot of the decisions that you would make um, are going to, you know, work against you because BTC has traditionally risen so much against uh, the US dollar. So, you know, you're never going to go wrong trying to make more BTC than you are you know, because that's kind of playing into the buy and hold, right? I guess so, in a, in a way, yeah. So, th so that's that's why I think Bonavest has a pretty good strategy. He, he doesn't really care so much about the price of Bitcoin versus USD because he just believes that over time Bitcoin's going to rise in value and that those profits will come naturally. But then you just work on trying to make more. Bitcoin, and then as Bitcoin goes up, boom, profit. Yeah, I mean that, that's similar to mine. I mean, I, I, I won't say I don't care what my U.S. dollar balance is, but I get more pissed off when I sell Bitcoin and I'm in U.S. dollars and I miss an upward movement and I miss an opportunity where I could have picked up more, more Bitcoin. I feel like that's when I'm losing in this sort of game that we're all involved in. Yeah, so my personal thing is um, as far as, you know, the, the whole – buy and hold is versus actually trying to trade and, and win and stuff like that. A lot of times I do hear the same thing with people saying, you know, oh, you can't trade, you should just buy and hold, you're just going to lose money. Most of those people that say that are people that they've done it and they can't do it, so therefore it's really yeah. done. Um, I mean, if that was to hold true, then you wouldn't have people in Wall Street trading stocks and things like that. Um, so it's kind of one of those things that's like, yeah, certain people know they can't do it, or I won't say that they can't. It's just they haven't learned how to. Um, I mean, there's going to be failure, there's going to be losses, but at the same time, what you're trying to do is minimize the times that you do lose, and um, and then maximize the the wins that you do have. So, like a lot of times, I've heard people say things like, uh, "Oh, that guy said he wins 51% uh, of the time and makes tons of money." It's like you know what? You, you could like make the right decision 20% of the time. But on the other 80% when you're wrong, you cut it off quick. 
but the 20% that you're right, you ride the hell out of them until they go way up. I mean, it's it's possible that way. It's just one of those things where you have to learn some things that you, maybe you haven't done before. Does that make any sense, though? I mean, yeah, it makes it makes a lot of sense. I mean, you're sort of saying some of the things that I was thinking in 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 my head, but you know, it's glad I'm glad to hear other people have similar types of feelings, just because I, you know, I, I look at it this way: trading in a certain degree is is a zero sum game. Um, you know, for, um, there's there's somebody on this on there's two people on each side of every trade, and so uh, to a certain degree, uh, you're it's it's like a game of poker maybe. Or, you know, you're competing against other people, other traders. Um, but yeah, I look at it from the same perspective you guys have been speaking about. I, I'd like to maximize the number, the amount of BTC I have, and try to make some smart moves here and there where I can minimize my pain and 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 maximize my gains and um, uh, sort of accept that there's going to be plenty of times where I miss or I'm out of the market or, or, or whatever it is, but just try to take an active role and do the best that I can to to do a better job of, of acquiring more Bitcoin instead of just buying it every Monday and, and seeing what happens. <laughs> Although that does sound kind of good right there. <laughs> that That's Andre Antonopoulos' strategy. He says he just buys Bitcoin every Monday with whatever money he has that's available. I would move that to uh, maybe Saturday night, get it a little cheaper, and then take Monday because uh, I think we had a nice little bump again today, right? Saturday. A little one. Yeah. And uh, now I, that brings me to a question that I have for you, Bonavas. How do you identify when a trade is going bad? I mean, sometimes, you know, you'll make a trade – and the market will go against you like, you know, 1% or 2%, and then it will completely reverse itself, and, you know, you're going to be doing really well. So, but how do you know if, if the trade is really going bad and you just need to get out? I think, I think you got to set yourself. I always look at percentages. A lot of people ask about stop losses and things like that. Um, and I've mentioned before I don't, quote, use stop losses. Like I don't enter a trade and I pick – uh, a particular price of when I get out at. It's a valid way to trade. I've, I've done it before like in stocks and other stuff, but um, in Bitcoin, I really haven't done that mainly because previous to now, we've been going up all the damn time. So it's like why even pick a stop loss? You're just, you just pick a good spot to buy in and you go up. But now that we're you know after this big 1,200 you know, uh, high and we're coming down and now we're seeing sideways action and up and downs, uh, now it is going to be important to set some stop losses, and what I've been doing is I just stick to a percentage. So if I, I look at the charts, I look at indicators, I decide you know if it's a good time to get in, I get in, and if I start watching those percentages start to go negative, I just keep an eye on it. And at some point, if an indicator totally goes against me, and uh, or the fact that I'm hitting like five to ten percent, it's like oh that's I'm done. You know it didn't go the way I wanted to. Um, but that doesn't usually happen. Usually it's like negative 1% to 2%, and then it's going the direction I wanted to. So maybe I didn't get it the, at the most absolute bottom, but uh, you know I, I come, come out positive on the other side. So like right now what I'll do is I'll, I'll zoom in. Like I'm in a couple of positions right now. I bought some PPC earlier today, and I tweeted that out. And uh, let's see, I also have some LTC that's the majority of my holdings. So like right now... <clears throat> just on this little quick spreadsheet, I just kind of have an idea about the average cost, uh, which is here that I paid, and then uh, how many I have, and I just kind of base that on the current prices. Oops. Current prices up here, and that gives me a percentage. So here in LTC, I'm negative 1%. Here on PPC, I'm positive 1.17%. I still got some NMC, like 1 BTC worth, and it's negative 1.5, and I've kind of forgotten about it. And it's one of those things that that's what I kind of look at. And if I start seeing that go really bad, then that's usually when I jump on it. But of course, I'm in LTC full, wholeheartedly, so I'm definitely constantly watching the LTC chart because that's where the majority of my money's at. So right now, at negative 1%, I'm not too excited about that. It, it's no big deal. you know. It's just going up and down, as we can see on the charts here. This is LTC and the uh, Ichimoku Cloud. We were flipping back between the hourly and the 15-minute, uh, and uh, 
you know, it's one of those things where I got in, it went up, and then as it pulled back down, it was kind of like, eh, I'm still kind of where I got in at. So I'm just kind of waiting. Thanks. That was uh, really helpful. I think that uh, maybe that's one of the things I've kind of been doing wrong is not really looking at the indicators to see if, uh, you know, um, if the market's just really moving against me or if it's just, uh, you know, pausing before it makes the turn. So. Yeah, I mean, uh, just keep an eye on your indicators. I mean, you got in on the trade based on indicator. You just got to kind of, once you're in, start looking. Everyone wants to look on the positive side. I do it all the time myself. And it's like sometimes you got to stop for a second and look at what what else could be going on that you're you know, the positivity kind of tends to hide and say, oh, no, I guessed it just right. You know, I'm good. I'm good. And then you start noticing, oh, wait a second. <laughs> I didn't see that. Oh, damn. <laughs> How much do you check out the, uh, the order book at the time of the trade? And <clears throat> how much does that factor into your decisions down the road? Um, the order book, man, I wish that – does anybody out there have a good link to a live order book for like LTC or uh, like any of the other altcoins really? But LTC, I mean everyone's trading BTC and LTC, and for the life of me, I have not found anybody give me a live uh, order book for LTC. I mean what are you looking for? Do you just want like the BTC style order book just making it actually live? Um, live, like it actually is moving and changing, kind of like uh, let's say let's look at the screen here. Let's look at uh, we found the uh, I two eighty six. What was it called? I two eighty trading dot i two eight six dot org. And uh, back when uh, uh, Mount Gox was, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, Mount Gox's API was kind of screwy, and uh, or and yeah, and Clark Moody hadn't fixed it yet, so we found this site, and this has a good live order book. This is uh, it'll let you do Bitstamp and it'll let you do Gox, and it shows you the order book, shows you trades, and it and it, you know, it's live. I mean, there's a delay of some sort, but it's a live order book, constantly changing, not like an HTML page that's updated, you know, every 30 seconds or something like that. They have BTC E yeah. here, but of course, even if they had that link working, that feed working, that would only be for uh, BTC, not for Litecoin. I might be able to throw something together for you as a Windows app if that would be interesting for you. Try well, like, that link that I just posted. Let's see. Um, so, like, a couple of people had uh, had mentioned uh, that QT Trader uh, does that, does the whole live order book inside the app. So uh, I was looking more for, like, a web reference or something. So here, here's an example of a, of a non-live order uh order book, which there are plenty of. So this is like LTC, BTC. It, you go to the page. Um, it's a PHP page, and it you know, spits out some text. Um, and then to, to see it updated, you have to hit refresh, I'm pretty sure, unless there's something in the background that refreshes it every so often. Uh, yeah, maybe. I'm not sure about this. So that, that's the difference between a live order book and a regular order book. And um, to really help you guys out, you, you know, I look at the order book a lot, but yeah, it's got to be a live one. It's got to be one that's constantly, kind of like we were just looking here. Like it just every trade, it's you know you'll see reds and greens and orders dropping off and being added on and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, QT Trader does have a pretty good order book in it. It doesn't have a graph, but it's pretty cool. You can group everything by price based on whatever you're trying to look at. So. Um, in the trading view chat, uh, there's a guy that's been in there before. I've seen him do a lot of talking and so forth. He's an Asian prepper. Uh, I don't know if he's like a prepper, like a zombie apocalypse type prepper, or that's something else. But uh, <laughs> I've never heard of an Asian uh, apocalypse prepper type person, so that would be something new. But <laughs> but uh, he, he's got some good uh, ideas. He was talking about in the, on the money management side, talking about with beginners that – uh, you know how to manage the money, and and that was kind of the focus of of this hangout was to kind of talk about that kind of stuff, uh, because I've seen a lot of people in chat, you know, blow off the fact about having to worry about keeping track of certain things like percentages. Yet I see other people like 
when we're diving down, crashing, and we go like that last crash where we went like almost half, like from 900 to 450, and at the end of the day, they come out saying, yeah, you know, I lost a couple of BTC. What? How do you lose a couple of BTC when we fell half price? Just sell what you got, throw the, throw the hammer, sell what you got, and just sit there and cash and wait. Just wait. And then buy back in like hours have gone by where the price doesn't move. Then go ahead and get in there. How do you lose money when it's dropping? Because some people really don't get the fact or don't do the right calculations in their head that um, you know when you're falling and you buy in and then it falls some more and then you buy in again, you know there are certain points where if you do that in the wrong way, you're, you're, all you're doing is going to be hurting yourself once you get down. Now I'll be honest on that big drop. I, I bought in like twice, not in e not in full shares, but I, I bought in once because I thought it was it was done, and I bought all in, and then I realized it went down even lower, and so I bought a, a very small portion back in, and then when it went lower, I just sold that, and then I finally bought down way low. So I, I went and I bought twice, but evidently these guys that are losing money when it falls that that far must have been going like in and out, in and out. Like if it falls 20 bucks, buy in, and then they sell it 20 bucks lower, and then they buy in 20 bucks lower than that. And it's like you can't do that because fees are going to hit you and the fact that you're continuing to continuing to buy in and then missing $20 as it falls once you're in. Um, it's better if you just figure that, hey, we're on a crash mode, sell everything, hold on to cash, wait for it to get to the bottom, and wait a couple of hours for the price to settle. If you look back in time, most of the time when we crash hard, it goes hours sideways after it's done crashing, and that's the time to buy in. Will that get you the lowest low? No. But will it keep you from going in and out, in and out, all the way down? Yeah, yeah it'll, it'll do that for you. Well, and I think it's worth mentioning, too, that um, psychologically, humans are far, all humans and all cultures are far more sensitive to perceived losses versus gains. So if, if you have something and you lose it, you feel much worse than if you learn that you never found something in the first place. And so when people, you know, it's just, I think it's just useful to remember, keep that in mind, you know, when you're, you're going through these periods where you say, you know, the value of your portfolio is going down, um, that it, it's hard to think rationally because you, you just have a psychological disposition to overreact at the, the idea that something bad is happening to you and you're incurring some sort of loss. Yeah, and that that's trading 101, the the emotional aspect. Most people discount that, but it's like you could paper trade, you could you could back test stuff, you could, you know, as live as you go live, you know, put down on paper and spreadsheets what trades you would do. But the moment you actually stick some money in there and the money's riding on it, all of a sudden the game is totally different. <laughs> It, it, it does have an effect on you, and you, you tend to like get a little scared a little quicker. Um, when you think you know it's going your way, you're gonna like go even further into it than you probably should have. You know, uh, emotions definitely a part of uh, learning how to trade uh, well and and uh, confidently. So aside from the big swings that we've seen, you know, do you have a target that you set for how much you want to make? on a trade before you get out of it? So perfect. That's one of the portions that I that, uh, wanted to talk about in the uh, Hangout tonight was like different percentages. Um, and those of you that have been listening uh, from some other shows, you know, typically lately I've, I've been narrowing it down to real specific saying that I try to hit 2 to 5% on every trade. Um, it's kind of just something I've just decided to stick with and has been working lately, so I'm just kind of continuing to go with that. And that's 2 to 5% on every trade. Um, is what I try to go into it as. Now things always change, and you you might have to back back out, or you may want to let it ride. But two to five percent, I'm happy with on every trade. If I only make one trade a day at two to five percent, I'm still on my other goal of uh, gaining one Bitcoin per day. Um, so my over overall goals in in my trading with uh, coins is going to be I want to gain one Bitcoin every day, and I on average. And I want to make two to five percent on every trade. Um, go ahead. I guess my question, is, I, I mean, I suppose I could just do the math. But if you're making, 
one Bitcoin per day, what kind of portfolio do you have? And, and I'm assuming basically that, you know, your portfolio is total value is inversely proportional to two to five percent, which would be one Bitcoin. Right. So right now, uh, let's put my spreadsheet over here. Uh, right now, I am rolling deep with uh, 80, 84 Bitcoins is what I have right now. So making one Bitcoin a day, um, especially if I'm sticking with my little rule of trying to do two to five percent um, per trade. If you know you you say well you're in on all 84 Bitcoin on every trade, you know the two percent would give me 1.6 Bitcoin. Um, mm -hmm. So move into this column here. Uh, my this is the daily uh, profit in Bitcoin, and you can see where I've got you know some positives, you know a plus six, plus five, plus seven. But then I also have negatives, minus 2, minus 1, 6, minus 1, 3. Um, this number here happens to be my average for those days. So for the last uh, 11 days, that should be a flat number here. Um, for the last 11 days, um, I have been at uh, 1.8 BTC per day on average. That's fantastic. Now, see, and that's great. And that's what I want to kind of... Uh, backing up with, with what was being said earlier about, well, people have said that you can't make money trading and, oh, it's better just to buy and hold or go mine. And it's like, well, hold on a second because then that means that there's no such thing as trading in general, stocks, forex, you know, all that stuff. It's like, no, there's ways to do it. It's just maybe that person needs to learn a few tricks or something, you know. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I'm, I'm averaging 1.8, but granted, people will say, oh, well, you've got 80-some Bitcoins. I only have eight I was like, okay, well, hold on a second. Let's look at these numbers here. If I've got 84, let's just say 80, and you have 8, then there's no reason why you can't make 0.18 Bitcoin every day. So if you have 8 Bitcoins and you're making 0.18 every day, that's a pretty good percentage of what you're working with. And if I can do it that at that percentage, then so can that person at 8 Bitcoins. Yeah, I just did some quick calculations, and if if everything was right, 0.18 Bitcoin per day at today's valuation of about 735 is about $48,000 per year. There you go. And and that percentage, that 0.18, what is that of 8? Since you got the calculator already out. Oh, I just put it away. Oh, but, sorry. Uh, so 0.18, I'll get it right here. 0.18 divided by 8 is... 2.25%, which kind of rides along the 2 to 5%. Of course, you got to figure in your commissions, and that's another part of the things that I wanted to talk about is, is commissions. But before we go into that, we've got uh, 51 viewers. I wanted to thank you guys for joining in, uh, 51 faithful viewers. If you are joining us from, say, the troll box or the uh, tradingview.com uh, chat, the flat chat, or from our sexy charts chat, uh, go ahead and Put a little shout out in there that you're watching us. Maybe post out the link that's right there in your URL bar of the window you're looking at, and tell them to come in and uh, let them know there's some good information here. And uh, you know, aside from all the uh, other mumbo jumbo that's out there that uh, other people are trying to post up, this is good, honest information. Uh, there's no uh, agenda. Uh, if I happened to like earlier today, I actually tweeted out uh, as an experiment. I tweeted out what I was doing just to see if people would actually you know do or follow along or what have you. It's kind of just a test. We were playing around with it in chat, um, but I put in there obviously that I was in it. You know how much I was in it for and things like that. So there's no hidden agenda here. It's just good information. Hopefully you guys walk away with some good stuff and uh, you know profit from it. So whether you save money or make money, one of those two. I hope you you get one of those two out of it. So actually, in, in saying that, we just now jumped up to 67 viewers. So something's working. <laughs> you guys are awesome. <laughs> so talking about um, uh, shucks, what was the last thing you said? Well, we were talking about what percentage you set, what target you set for percentages and trades, and you were saying how uh, you know even if you have a small portfolio, because because Bitcoin is infinitely divisible or it close to infinitely divisible. Um, you know, you can uh, was it 100 million satoshis per Bitcoin? A at any rate, um, you're able to get that two to five percent per day. So even if you have a small amount of Bitcoin, you can still set reasonable growth targets for yourself and not be constricted by 
like in a traditional market by share price. And then you're also saying that um, uh, you have to be careful on your trading fees because that could eat into your profits, especially when your margin or your your, your uh, profit on your on your positions is only two to five percent. Yep. So real quick, I'll just interject. If you're in PPC, uh, I was just told uh, from the chat box. Of course, I caught it a few minutes late, but we are jumping back up on PPC. Uh, so if you're in PPC, this is a good thing. Uh, looks like uh, we we were going up here. I purchased in somewhere around right here in these set of green bars. This is a five minute chart, um, and of course we went down, but didn't get too excited. Mainly because like we were just talking about on the uh, my little spreadsheet here. Um, I'm looking at my percentages, and PPC was like positive 1.17. It's not exactly at 2% where, where we were just talking about 2 to 5% is what I aim for. But, of course, I'm not like losing tons of money, so, you know, I just let it ride. We'll just let it ride and see what happens. Um, I don't know what that noise was for. Oh, yeah, I do. That's the Mario sounds from uh, I-286 trading. So, real quick, that was just a PPC update. Um but what we were talking about is within those those two percents on my spreadsheet, I was mentioning that oh you know if you have a small bankroll and you're like using eight bitcoins, um, and your goal is similar to mine, and instead of one point eight one bitcoin, you're doing point one eight bitcoin, which is the same percentage that I'm doing, except you have a smaller uh, wallet, right? Uh, but in doing that, we mentioned that oh you know that's about two point two five percent. If you do point one eight bitcoins every day. Using an eight Bitcoin uh, wallet capital trading capital, that's only like two point two five percent. Well, the one thing I wanted to kind of bring up and talk about in the hangout is about your trading fees. A lot of people seem to have this difficulty figuring out, you know, what what are going to be, uh, you know, my trading fees. What, you know, how do I keep track of that? And it's really easy because uh, let's say where do where do you trade at, uh, uh, Wayne? Um. I use QT Trader and I have an account with Bitstamp. With Bitstamp, okay, boom, you got me because I don't know what Bitstamp's commissions are. Do you know? Uh, I can look it up really quick if you like. Now, Wayne, you're killing me. You're proving my point right here, young man. <laughs> you trade on Bitstamp, but you don't know what the commissions are, the fees. Well, I think I know what it is, but I don't want to say something that's wrong if I'm t giving it oh, okay. to people. So, so here's the thing. Don't don't do like Wayne. Come on, Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> don't be trading and not knowing what the fees are. You have to know that. You have to know that. I'm, I'm sure Wayne does a good job. I think it's 0.5%, but I want to make sure. Okay. And it changes. Like, for example, it's it, the reason I say that is because it's on a sliding scale. The greater your trade volume... Here, I'm, gonna, I'm defending myself right now. The greater <laughs> your trade volume is, the lower your commission is. And so yeah. in QT Trader, for me, it says based on the volume that I've traded so far this month, my fee on my next trade will be 0.4%. But it's a variable that changes based on the volume. So it's, it's think it starts at 0.5 and it scales down from there based on your volume. Yeah, no problem. Um, so Gox works the same way. Uh, it scales down your fees based on how much volume you trade, which is kind of off for some of those guys that don't have big bank rules because I think like the first break point is like 100 BTC. So if you're like buying and holding with like a small wallet, you're not, you're never going to hit past the 0.6% that Gox starts with just because you're not trading in and out, you know, often enough, which kind of sucks. I wonder if they'll, they'll rescale that. Um, so in line with the fee thing, you got to know your fees. It's really easy. It's super simple. So let's look at these big numbers that we can see right here. So this is a BTC ease uh, uh, dollar amount, 725. If you're on Gox and you trade with more than 100 BTC in the last 30 days, it's 0.5% on both sides of the trade. When we, Whenever you see fees, it always means per trade. So if you buy, it's that fee. If you sell, it's that fee again. So Typically, when I enter in with a trade, let's say I was going to buy at the 725 that it was just showing, I already know I'm going to calculate in uh, 1% because I, on Gox, I trade at 0.5% on when I buy and 0.5% when I sell. I add it together, even though it's not the exact best way to calculate. It's not the true way to calculate it, but just for being able to trade successfully and not get eaten up by fees, I just figure 1% in my head. If you're just starting out with Gox, it's 0.6%. So you got to do a little bit more math with a little uh, uh, calc exe here. That's what I use, and uh, do you know 1.2 percent. 
So all you have to do with 1% is just move the decimal over two times. So right now it's 727.80. Just move the decimal over two times. You're at 727. Just figure $7.30 is going to be fees. So if I buy in right now at 727.80, I have to add on $7.27. My price is now 73507. That means if I sell lower than 3507, I got a loss. I only start to make money when I get above 73507. So if you know these fees when you're buying in, just know know what that magic number is. Already tack on the fee and say I've got to get above that for that price before I I can sell with any kind of a profit. And if it ever goes bad on you and you're only at like say 736, sell it. If you if you know it's going bad for you and you're only gonna you're only a dollar above where your break even point is, sell it now. Sell it to where you you get the least amount of cost to you. Um, it's also possible that there's no no volume for you to sell at 736. So you might as well start the sell now, put a limit order or a market, not a market order, a limit order at like 730 and just sell to it, let it build back up to 735, sell again to 730, you know, do what you got to do to get out without losing more. That's kind of like a money saving tip there. By the way, we got 85 viewers now. I appreciate it, guys. Faithful, 85 faithful viewers are uh, chiming in. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. No, thank you. Oh, you're beautiful. Thank you. Um, but yeah, uh, just watch them fees. You got to have that stuff calculated uh, when you enter in with the trade. Have that that number already set. So we got a bunch of questions coming in here. I just want to run through a couple of them because some of them are actually pretty good. Um, Visual Vendetta is asking, do you all think it'll hit 10,000 mark by the end of the year? Are you kidding? That's what, a day? What are we, what are we talking, 10,000? 10, 10,000 traded? <laughs> I know you mean $10,000. Let's see. Uh, I think they might have meant next year. Next year? Maybe next year. No, I, I don't think that. I don't, I'm not thinking that. I, I mentioned in a chat the other uh, earlier today that uh, I'm kind of taking it as, a, as the internet boom of 2000. I'm kind of saying that this whole coin thing could be a, a big thing that's a fad that'll last for so long and go away. So what I've decided to train my mind on is I'm going to trade it like it's going to go out of style next year sometime. So I want to trade as, as profitably as I can now with as much money as I can now. And hey, if things change like come March or April and things start blowing up, then I'm in great position uh, because I've been trading it as if it's going to go away in about six months. Um, but obviously, I'm I'm still hoping that the long-term deal that Bitcoin uh, becomes the new thing. But um, just like some other people said, what's to say that Bitcoin isn't the one that succeeds? Maybe some of these other coins now takes over. Bitcoin was the the coin to get everything started. Um, so there may be some other coin that's maybe valuable to invest in. So I'm just trading it like it's going out of style in six months, and then as we go along into springtime next year, then uh, then I'll be able to you know reevaluate and say, oh no, this is picking up. I'm going to hang in there. And guess what? Because I've been trading like a madman, uh, going after everything. Uh, I am full Bitcoin with like 200 BTC, and that'll be freaking awesome when we do hit 5,000. <laughs> Can I make a suggestion about that? I, I haven't actually done this, but I thought about it uh, a good bit the other day, and it seems to me that uh, one of the good ways to estimate the potential price of Bitcoin in the coming year is to try to calculate how much money you think could reasonably flow into the Bitcoin market and then just divide that by the number of bitcoins that you think will be available at that time which is actually a known quantity so if you look and you say okay you know this much money's come from china and you know we've got these um uh there's a couple of hedge funds and a couple other types of, uh, of uh, sources of wall street money that are starting to get involved with bitcoin and they've already announced that they've raised money and they're going to be pouring into the market so if you look at it that way that might be one possible way of modeling how much you think Bitcoin, each individual Bitcoin would be worth because you simply have to just take the entire market cap and then slice it up by the number of Bitcoins which you if you pick a date in the future based on the um, uh, just based on how Bitcoins are mined you can actually know with a fair level of precision how many Bitcoins will exist on any particular date in the future Right. So there's lots of formulas and a lot of people speculating on price. And what you mentioned definitely is some of the ways that they uh, people have used to try to calculate it. Be honest with you, it's beyond me. 
Um, and like I said, I'm, I'm trading it like it's going out of style, so I don't try to calculate what the possible numbers could be because it's all just a guesstimation at this point. But uh, definitely there are a lot of stuff on uh, Reddit and in forums that you can look at as far as how to understand market capitalization and things like that of possible future uh, price points for Bitcoin. So all the very interesting stuff. Uh, let's see, uh, Bald Traveler Sean, uh, or Shan, Bald Traveler Shan, interesting name. Have you had time to play with QT Trader yet? <laughs> Dude, everybody's going to get mad at me. No, I have not. I, I ha And I'm back home now, so I have no excuses. So maybe tomorrow I'll actually get a chance to start making my first trades using QT Trader, and then I can actually uh, give some better uh, a better idea of some of the, the my experience or review of QT Trader is. I'm sure I'm going to love it because everybody tells me it's freaking awesome. Uh, it does stop losses and all that kind of stuff, so I'm sure I'm going to love it. I just need to take a few minutes to actually uh, review it and start using it and hopefully improve my, my uh, some of my trades. <laughs> Let's see. We've got uh, Jason Gallagher. If you place a sell order or a buy order at a price where there are 300 other orders, uh, and, and this is 300 other like, coins, I'm going to guess, at the same price, what happens? Are you placed in a line? And uh, it's first come, first serve. So coming from um, a background of other trading and like Forex and stocks and stuff, typically speaking, the rule is kind of like first in, first out. Um, then you've got people that talk about how uh, if you're a big you know, hedge fund manager or something, someone that carries a lot of weight, uh, your orders are going to get sold or bought first. Um, so there's all that kind of talk. Um, I, I believe that it's a first in first out is the way it's supposed to work. Uh, one of the things that I did try doing or I noticed on like on when I used to trade on Gox was that if I had um, placed an order for like 30 BTC and I noticed that there would be like 40 uh, BTC on my price point. So what we're looking at is the order book. So like right now um, at uh, what is this 795 on the 790 or I'm sorry 795.03 it says 412. So let's say 400 of that, or I'm sorry, 12 of that is mine, and somebody else has 400. I've noticed that when it hits that point, it'll go down to like uh, you know 4, uh, 400 even, and I'll go, all right, I sold, and then I go look at my Gox, and it still says I got 12.37 whatever up for sale, and I'm kind of like, what the hell? So one of the things that I tried to start doing is, and then. This is totally me speculating that I break up my – if I have a big order, I'll break it up into smaller quantities. So even though they're on the same price point, um, if I want to sell 20 BTC, I put four orders of five BTC. I don't know for 100% if that works, but I believe that it has something to do with it that on a smaller order, it'll take it first. So maybe you might experiment with that, guys, and let me know uh, what you what you find by doing that. But if you have like a big order, or maybe like on LTC where you got a thousand LTC or something like that, break it up in a small two hundred blocks of orders and see how that sells for you. Uh, typically, what BTC sizes orders are you working with? Maybe use uh, BTC USD as an example, and your current BTC orders in PPC if you are still in. Uh, I am still in PPC, um, so we, we've talked about this before. I, I'm pretty open with my little spreadsheet here, showing my numbers and so forth. Um, my current bankroll looks like it's a net around 61,000, um, which means I've got about 84 bitcoins. Um, now that's calculating all the different coins that I have. So currently I'm mostly in Litecoin with 74 Bitcoins worth of Litecoin. And um, and then I have some PPC. I have like eight uh, Bitcoins worth in PPC. So the sizes that I'm working with, it, it varies because as you can see right here, I have one Bitcoin in, in NMC, name coin. Um, it just depends on what I decide to invest in and throw money at or what have you. Uh, it could be in small or large sums. So it really all depends. Can you take a second to explain why you're in PPC right now? I mean, it seems like <clears throat> that's something that people have been talking about. And I have to confess I'm completely clueless about why that's an attractive coin right now. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, all what, what I noticed on it was that uh, looking at a one-hour chart here, let's see, where where did the first? Oh, let me turn that. 
the Nintendo. By the way, if you use uh, tradingi286.org, uh, you'll, that's where you'll get the whole uh, Mario Nintendo sounds for buys and sells. So if you hear that in the in my speak in the speaker here, that's where it's coming from. <laughs> So looking at PPC, let's pull that up. Markets, PPC, USD. Oh, we were just looking at No, there we go. And let's go to like a two-hour chart. Yeah, no. Yeah, two-hour chart. I like the one-hour. So this is one-hour PPC, and um, essentially after the big drop, uh, we kind of went sideways like with the rest of the market on PPC. And one day, uh, looking at the sexy charts over here, I was able to see a big green stick for PPC over here. And I said, hmm, that's interesting. So I decided to look at it. And because we were going sideways for so long with everybody else, and all of a sudden, PPC started to spike up. And it's kind of strange because most of the altcoins kind of, you know, they do their own thing. It's don't like buy, don't you don't buy. normally mess with them very much. Uh, but to see one of them out of nowhere start to spike up, it kind of raised my attention, so I started watching it. Now, normally what ends up happening is it spikes up and and someone like you know pumped it up and then they're gonna just sell it off or whatever. So as it started to climb up, it kind of did pretty natural things, and then somebody really did pump it up, and then that's when I saw this big volume here. Well, I've learned never buy on the pumps. It's like unless you're already in down here and you've got a sell order like at 20, 30 percent up, don't try to get in then. Just wait. And I did. I waited, and it didn't fall down. So then I was really like, hmm, when should I get into this? And, of course, this was during the time when um, I was on a flight coming from Texas, so I wasn't able to get access to a computer. So by the time I got home, um, it was kind of like up in here, and I didn't know what was going to happen. So it wasn't until earlier today that I finally bought in, and I bought in at like uh, 4.46. Um, so the reasoning behind getting in was mainly because I saw this big pump Tons of volume right here. This is like uh, 11,000 um, uh, 11, PPC, which is freaking $44,000 worth, and that's just in this one hour. That's a, that's a short hour here. So this is tons of volume, and it didn't come crashing down immediately. Um, it went sideways some more. It went gradual. All of a sudden, we get another good pump. That's a 31,000 PPC, so that's like $120,000 thrown at it in that one hour. So I was like, this is pretty good. So I decided to get into it, and knowing that we did hit a high of 461, I felt for my 2 to 5%, there was enough room to go from 446 to 461. So using the calculator there, if we were at, if we hit the 460 again, minus the 446 that I got in at, that's 14 cents. So 14 cents divided by the 446 is uh, 3%. And minus my fees, minus 0 0.04. Oops, I did that wrong. Crap. Plus 0 0.04. Minus 0 0.004. That's 0.4%. So then it comes out with 2.73 or 2.74% profit. And that's within my 2 to 5%. So I figured, you know what? It's okay. You know, for short term, I'll go for it. Plus, if we've already hit 4.6 before, Who's to say we don't blow past that on this next run up? So I figured, eh, it's a good deal. Good and time. I tweeted it. <laughs> so if you're not following me, follow me at, at Bonavest, just in case I decide to do that again. Hey, just as a heads up, there's the good bit of downward action on Bitstamp, the most in a long time. Let's take a look at that. I don't even know what's the best way to look at some Bitstamp. I'm just looking at the 30 minute chart and it's, you know. Oh yeah, it's a big drop right here at the end here. So we've been kind of going sideways at around 735 and all of a sudden now we're down to 725. And then right now we've got a wall of about uh, 300, 287. Yeah, you got 287 uh, coins sitting at 725. Interesting. I don't. I don't pay much attention to Bitstamp very often. I'm usually looking at Gox, China, and uh, BTCE since I trade on BTCE. It's really going down now. Let's see what else everybody else is doing here. Yeah. So we're trending down. Um, let's see. We always have to interrupt whatever we're talking about when we start looking at charts. <laughs> when there's money on the line.
By the way, we've got 87 faithful viewers. Thank you, everyone, for uh, tuning in. Hope you're uh, enjoying the show and getting a little bit of a uh, bit of good information out of it. Of course, I am looking at the Hichimoku cloud, and uh, it is telling me that uh, once again we are probably going to hopefully, hopefully once again bounce off of this support line. This is a uh, Litecoin dollar, and that support line is at 2341. We've already tapped it uh, twice. Um, but that is the major support right now going through the Ichimoku cloud. So I think right now we're just uh, hoping that we don't uh, get lost to the end. And it looks like it rose up just a little bit there, so uh, could be doing all right. Uh, another indicator that happens to be on this particular chart is this Bollinger Band here. Uh, which means, uh, typically speaking, in the center point uh, is the halfway mark, and uh, the outside little green lines here are your, uh, your, the bands. And uh, what you determine is when you cross over the midway point, you would be going down. And if you can pass over uh, the midpoint going up, then you would be on an uptrend. So if we scroll back here, we can see where that happens. So like here... Uh, we passed through the yellow line and closed up below the yellow line, so that would be an indication that we may be going down. And it also serves as a resistance when going up. So here it didn't pass and close a candle over the uh, midway point, so it fell back down some more. And typically speaking, it'll ride the uh, the actual uh, outside band usually. When it is riding the, uh, the edge, it'll end up hugging that line. So here we are again. We're hugging the line. We come up. Uh, we close up a candle right here up above the midway point. So that would signal that we're going up, and we did. And pretty much right here, we actually hugged the line once again and started to do some sideways action and finally broke across the midpoint once more. So that signaled that we were going to go down. Um, so right now, looking where we're at, um, we did close up a candle above the, uh, the halfway point, which would normally signal that we're going up. And for some reason, okay, we're going down. So now you got to kind of look at some other indicators to see what's going on. And personally, I think with what I'm seeing here that uh, it's not going to be strong enough to push all the way through uh, the cloud here. And I think it's going to serve as a good support to the time that uh, as we move further forward that it's going to the support's going to get weaker over here and we'll, we'll return to going back up. And that should fall in with about China buying time. No, China, no. <laughs> Yes, it'll be China buying time at midnight. Typically speaking, China is, uh, gets a little fired up around 11, 12 o'clock, so it's kind of uh, interesting. Uh, you may not be able to see the bottom portion of the screen on, on the YouTube, uh, YouTube, but uh, right about here is midnight, and, and that's where the cloud starts to get a little weak. So long as we stay above this line here, it could be something that a good positive. It could push us up, and that's probably true on uh, Bitcoin as well. Get rid of all this junk. So yeah, looking here at the Ichimoku cloud, we are seeing that on the one hour, the support line is a lot further down than where we're at right now. Um, but we stayed up pretty high above the cloud up to now. So we'll see where that goes. Okay, I'm good. <sighs> I feel better now. Energized. I'm ready. I have another question for you, Mona. The um, you said you're trying to make two to five percent on each trade. When you exit the trade, are you almost always in U.S. dollars, or are you in Bitcoin when you exit the trade? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so prior uh, to to recent this last week, I've always said about when I do Litecoin, I usually go to the Litecoin Bitcoin, but um, I, I re rethought that, and I'm thinking that uh, it's when you you get out of Litecoin, it's typically because you see it going down, and if you've watched Litecoin and Bitcoin for any length of time, you see that they kind of trend together, so it's kind of one of those things that um, if Litecoin is going down, why would you want to go into Bitcoin, because it's going to go down too, it, they're kind of working together. So I've kind of learned that, you know what, that's probably not the best idea to go to Bitcoin. Um, it actually would be a better idea to go to dollar and then wait for the fall so that you could, if you wanted Bitcoin, you could buy back in lower on Bitcoin. Uh, so 
I think that's where I'm I'm starting to realize that yeah, it's probably best in most cases that when we start to go down in Litecoin, sell out to the dollar and then wait for the price to stop and then buy back in whether it's Litecoin or Bitcoin. And what about when you go to work or you go to bed? Are you in US dollars or are you mostly in some sort of crypto? Yeah, I've heard people I've heard people mention that uh uh, before they go yeah, to bed, uh, or before they go to bed, they they, yeah, they just get rid of everything. They clean out and they go to bed uh, and they sleep like a baby. And it's like, well, those are those are what I call dollar traders. They're trading for to gain extra dollars, not to gain BTC. They're not looking to uh, do long term type stuff. You know, they're not worried about the fact that you know possibly next year they could be worth you know two thousand dollars a Bitcoin. Because all they're doing is they're getting in, they're making some U.S. dollars on the increase of BTC's price, and then they cash back out or go back to fiat and then go to sleep. So those of us that are trying to actually build on BTC and know that the price will continue to raise slowly over time throughout the uh, first quarter of next year, uh, I don't want to go to fiat unless we're diving down. If we're diving down, then I'll go to fiat. Um, but I'm not going to sit there and cash when uh, overnight, man. If if Things take off, you're left without anything. Uh, if things go down or whatever in cash, that'd be a great thing. But especially after we've already gone half price uh, down, it's like up is pretty much the general direction. I mean, here we are. We used to be at like uh, oh, that's LTC. Uh, we used to be at like uh, 1100 right here, and then we got down as low as 400, and right now we're not even at the halfway point. We're at 700, so. To me, I don't see a reason to be trying to go to fiat at night. So, so you think the long-term trend at this point is still back up to try to test that 1100 level again? Yeah, I've been I've been bullish, even though people will say that I've been I'm a perma bull, which I'm not. But uh, I've been bullish on on the pricing uh, since we. This is what I would call the bounce, and then this is the pullback, and I never buy the bounce because over time, yeah, it's going to come back down. So. From about this point, and we kind of flattened out here, this is a, a four-hour chart, so this really represents almost a full 24 hours right here. So at the point we steadied out here, I was bullish because we've already pounded the hell out of it. I mean, literally, we got completely beat up on price, and it came down in half. Um, we went up, so everybody got excited, and of course, you know, yeah, there's a reaction. We come down. At that point, you would expect some sort of a trading range up and down, getting smaller and smaller and smaller. We didn't do that. It's been a slow, steady, gradual increase over time, which is freaking awesome. So that told me after we, you know, we boosted back up and started going this direction, that you know, I was bullish at that point, and still am at this point. So bye, bye, bye. When, you know, when I look at like the charts and trading view and 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 just look around, it seems to me, and just this is just my perception, that the general consensus is that. We're headed back down to that three to four hundred range. It, people seem to talk about that as it's almost an inevitable move, uh, and and you don't put a you know when you see or hear things like that, um, and you look at their analysis, do you think oh you know maybe that guy's got a point maybe I should rethink this or do you kind of say nope these guys don't get it they're missing something. No, uh, and everyone has their own take on it, and I could be wrong just like the next guy, but when I'm looking at this chart, and this covers all the way back to November 23rd, so this is about a, a month. This is about 30 days right here. Um, look where, we, where we've been and where we're going. It's like I don't get where – why would we fall out? Why would the price fall out now? Um, we've already been through uh, three China scares. <laughs> Three China scares. Uh, all of these big dips have been from news from China. Um, I would almost be surprised if, if something truly horrible came out of China that it wouldn't dip because of the fact that we're so like numb to all the, the bad China press stuff. Whatever. <laughs> but uh, Actually, that first one was a, a U.S. scare. Well, not really a U.S. scare. We hit 900, and somebody decided to do a sell-off on that really first one. This first one here? Yeah, that was just sell off. I thought it was um uh what was the I can't remember what the that first was pretty one. much the same day the US uh had that hearing. No, 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 that's not this. That that's this this well, we went from nine hundred down to like five Yeah, 500. that's right here. 
Yeah, we're we're over here. Yeah, see, this was the Senate hearing down here at 900, which seemed so horrific that day, and now it looks like more like a little speed bump, sort of. So, yeah, that was the Senate. Oh, hearing. okay. And then this first one was, um, I can't remember exactly what it was. It was something to do with China. This one was the uh, China banning uh, Bitcoin, which didn't happen. And this is the China uh, stopping deposits. But I can't remember what the first one was, because that was the one that I got scared and, and I sold out. I think that was the... This was the banning of Bitcoin that didn't happen. This one was something else to do with China. God dang it, what was it? Oh, I can't remember. But all three of these were China-related news. <laughs> so it's kind of laughable that if we, if we heard some China news now, I wonder how numb some people are going to be about it. <laughs> so we've got 88 viewers. Thank you very much for tuning in. Feel free to uh, connect with me at Bonavest and our community on Google+. Plus. Um, the name of the community is uh, Bitcoin Trading Advice and News. Uh, let's run through a couple of questions here that are stacking up. Um, what trading algorithm do you use? EMA 521. Do you think bots out there are manipulating prices algorithms? Um, I don't get in too much with the whole bot conspiracy. I don't get into any of the conspiracies. Of it. When people start talking about, oh, the price manipulation, yeah, okay, there is. I don't care. Just trade what's in front of you. On BTC and LTC, on the small coins, I don't ever worry about trading any indicators on the small coins because there's so little volume and so much pumping and dumping. No indicator is going to show you any of that stuff, so don't even try to, to use charting or technical analysis on those other altcoins and stuff. Um, as far as EMA goes, I use the default settings here in uh, Bitcoin Wisdom, which happened to be 7 and 30. Uh, Dan Jones, what are the new charts you are using? TradingView, can you tell us how to set it up? Okay, sweet. The cool thing about TradingView, if you haven't been using TradingView, check it out. Check it out. TradingView.com, um, and once you get there, go ahead and register and, and sign in. And at that point, you can literally copy uh, my chart. And what I'll do real quick is I'll, I'll paste this in the chat now. Of course, if you're not already registered, you can actually scroll back to it if you wanted to, but you can always ask, and uh, I can repost it. But once you have a, a particular uh, chart up, you can easily just uh, grab the... Oops, I did that wrong. Control-Z. Control-A-C. And just paste the URL um, in chat or anywhere, for that matter. And when people click on it, they can actually see the exact chart with all the settings that you have set up. Um, if you don't want to share all your settings, there's ways to where you can do like little snapshots and things like that. Um, and like you'll see here, there's like a little avatar, kind of a miniature thing. And when you click on it, it shows an image of whatever that person has created. So this person created this chart uh, using TradingView. Of course, I can't adjust it, I can't edit it, I can't copy it. So if you're worried about you know your super secret you know ways of settings and doing things, you don't have to share that. You can just share the image and get your point across. TradingView is really cool. I've been using it since the, the Christmas break. We've talked about it a little bit on some previous Hangouts, but not really delved into it, and I freaking love it now. I mean, sexy charts are great. They're good for being able to have multiple charts on one screen, but when it comes to indicators, oh my god, check this out. You click indicators, there's every freaking indicator you could ever want, and that's on the free version. There's more if you're a paid member. If you become pro, there's way more settings in here, and that's just technical analysis. If you hit fundamentals, look at that crap. Look at that. That's a list. Oh, my God. Of course, most of this stuff's like for stocks and uh, Forex and things like that, but uh, technical analysis, free. You can have just about anything you could ever want to be able to figure out what you want to do with buy or sell on uh, Bitcoin. It's freaking awesome. Check it out. So, uh, Bonavis, a uh, couple uh, episodes ago, I, I asked you about security. Um, wondering uh, what you've been doing about that. I have taken care of it. Yes, I have Actually, gotten. Actually, uh, here. Yeah, <laughs> because I'm so open with with showing my my accounts and and my trade history and blah blah blah. You know, it was inevitable that I need to at least you know do the 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 best that I can do to to guard against. Um, you know, hackers and and whatnot, and people that uh, would want to see me or see do me harm or something like that. So I use Google Authenticator uh, for the uh, uh, what is it two factor authorization two FA two factor authorization is that right? Authentication. There you go. 
two-factor authentication now with Google uh, authentication. And um, as as we talked about, John, uh, you know, we talked about possibly doing some videos for people that don't have that. So before that video ever comes out, I, I would tell you it behooves you to go ahead and figure it out on your own <laughs> prior to me making a video about it. Figure out how to use something like uh, Google Authenticator or some other form of 2FA, two-factor uh, authentication, to protect your accounts. I mean, it's just a, a safe thing to do when money is on the line. So it's not as uh, not as simple as like your login to uh, your free online games or your porn or something like that. This is more more this, this is more important. It's money, <laughs> the money that pays for the porn. You got to protect it. Yeah, it's funny because you know I kind of feel more secure having my money. Um, with a website that has, you know, my Bitcoin um, than I do with f Fiat. But now it has to be a very trusted site like Mt. Gox, BTCE, uh, Coinbase. Um, you know, a, a lot of these, I'm very cautious with the sites that I'll do business with, with Bitcoin. Sure, you got to. And uh, another thing I just, uh, the only reason I brought that up is I just set up my uh, my first paper wallet with Bit38, which is uh, pretty cool. Um, Bit38? Yeah, Bit38. It's uh, basically the idea of a paper wallet is, you know, you print out your, your public key, you print out your private key, your signature basically, and, um, you know, you can't hack paper. But, um, you know, the problem with a paper wallet is if somebody gains access to that paper wallet, boom, they have access to all your coins, they can move them, and then they're gone. So with uh, BIP38, um, you can actually do a standardized encryption on your private key. So you can put on a little password on your BIP38 you know, key, and, um, you know, that way if somebody gets access to your your paper, they still have no access to your coins. They, they still can't, you know, sign anything with it. And then when you need to, to um, actually use your coins, you can go to something like bitaddress.org, and uh, you can actually decrypt the Bit38 paper wallet right then and there. And then you get your private key, you can use the signature and pop it in your wallet, and uh, there you go. You have your coins, you can send them wherever you want. Oh, that's awesome. I, I'll, I mean, I've already done the, the authentication thing, but I mean, I'll check out that site as well. And of course, that'll be one of the sites we'll try to include on our little resources thing when we get our website up. Yeah, I mean, that's more of a, let, let's say you just don't want to trade with, let's say you get up to 100 BTC, and you don't want to trade with more than 100 BTC. Then if you want to just keep them in cold storage, that's the way to go. Definitely. That is such a first world problem. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's like... That's that's pretty much like upper middle class first world problem at this point. <laughs> Sign of the times. So Dan Jones, uh, the answer to your question there, TradingView, yeah, TradingView.com, check that out. Uh, you can share the uh, the charts. Uh, there's other people in there. You can ask to have the links to their charts. So check that out. And uh, just now I've opened up uh, the uh, Bonavest fund tracking spreadsheet. Which uh, honestly, I, I think there's a couple of trades I haven't entered in yet uh, at the bottom that happened, uh, I think yesterday or earlier today, um, and that was an answer to uh, let's see, Juani Lohiko says, uh, "How was the community wallet doing? Have you traded with the donations?" So I have been trading with the donations. Um, oops, uh, a lot of people have been asking about it. Uh, it is getting more and more difficult to kind of like show true numbers because, as you can tell by if you look through this. It uh, doesn't include any fees. I'm literally just writing down the actual trades that I've done at the price points and so forth, but I, I haven't subtracted out all the fees and stuff, and that's mainly because it's just a, an accounting nightmare to, to try to have uh, mixed in coins with my normal uh, trading wallet as well as this. So um, I'm kind of selective with the, the stuff that I enter in here and, 
it's just it's just hard to keep track of. But this is just a good way to kind of just guesstimate what what's been going on with that money. And I I will use uh, that portion of the the profit or whatever. I'll use that number. I won't worry. I'll pay for the fees. Uh, so that's a good thing. Uh, right now we're at twenty five percent up. Uh, we did. I think I did buy back in higher or something on a couple of these trades here at the end, but overall we're up 25%, which is freaking awesome. So this came out of uh, me asking one day just for the hell of it. I put a QR code for a blockchain wallet, and two hours later I had almost like a full Bitcoin in there of people just giving me money for the fun of it in the hopes that I could actually turn a profit and I would return the uh, profit uh, to the people that contributed. Um, so. Right now, though, if you have contributed, I am talking to you. If you have not already emailed me uh, information as far as your transaction or the amount that you sent, you know, some sort of proof because a lot of the people that donated donated with an exchange wallet. And in case you guys don't know this, if you send money to somebody using an exchange wallet, more times than not, the the way it's going to look when they receive it, it's going to have an, a wallet ID, but that's not going to be directly to your account. That's going to be to the exchange itself. So what happened is a bunch of people sent me money from the exchange, their exchange wallet. So when I got it, I don't know where to send it to. I, I don't have a proper wallet ID to send it back to them. So out of 28 people that contributed, I only have like uh, eight people verified of where to send the money back to. So uh, that's why I'm kind of like prolonging getting this up to where I can ask other people to contribute to it uh, because I want to make sure I can keep track of whoever's already in. So. Right now, it's only 8 of 28, which means all the profit's going to go to those 8 people if that's all I can get information from. So, <laughs> But yeah, um, I try to enter in all the trades that I do here. Most of them have been profitable except for towards the very end, and all the ones with the Crypto Trader bot written next to it, I traded with Crypto Trader, and of course it lost a little bit of money. <laughs> only like 0.1% or something like that, but... All these little trades, it just really didn't do a very good job, and it wasn't because of Crypto Trader. In this case, it was literally just the uh, XPM market and the low vo uh, volume uh, caused the losses, not necessarily the programming or Crypto Trader. So, so that is that. Thanks for the question, there, Juani. Uh, let's see, Dean uh, Gon Gon Calves. Gon Calves. I will guess that that is Spanish. I don't know. But Dean, what is your username or link in TradingView want to follow you? Um, I haven't figured out how to publish charts and stuff in TradingView, but evidently that's something you can do. But my name is Bonavest, and I will type in here, click my name to, or not my name, actually you have to click my avatar. Click my avatar to follow me. Thanks. And actually, there's a good community going on of a good group of people in TradingView, uh, TradingView.com uh, that are pretty helpful in most cases. So feel free to uh, talk to those guys in there. They're freaking awesome. Uh, quick question: How do you how often do you do hangouts? I try to do them every night, but I think that may be slowing down because I am realizing it is wearing on me, and I must like do other things like eat and forage for food and take a shower every now and again. Is it the third Thursday yet? That's when I shower. No, no. Well, you know, I, I heard you can order pizza with Bitcoin nowadays. You can? Really? Yeah. Wow. Is it 1,000 Bitcoins? I, I think it's 10,000, actually. Ah, 10,000. Nice. That's a hell of a pizza. They better have some <laughs> fat pepperonis on that, baby. Yeah, they're flown in with a private jet straight from Italy. Straight from Italy. <laughs> and you get to keep the private jet. Oh, well, then that's worth it. <laughs> I just discovered that my mic was muted. Ah, that's probably why we didn't hear you. Yeah. See, I'm scrolling through the questions here. So John Paquette um, is a good, uh, faithful viewer of the show, uh, and John's saying, so the charts are basically a reflection of Bitcoin press releases. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, 
seems like monitoring the news wires for Bitcoin info would be a good tool. It is definitely a good tool. I mean, like I said, we were talking about earlier, these three uh, big dips were initiated by news coming out of China, and uh, I was here for this one. This is when I actually cashed completely out to my bank account because I was kind of scared, and I didn't take enough time at 4 in the morning when I got the news to read the translated version of the Chinese uh, little addendum that they sent out, the little notice, and I ended up cashing completely out to, to my bank account, uh, fearing the fact that if it crashed far enough, that maybe the uh, the Russian mafia might say, you know what, enough of this Bitcoin stuff, let's just take our money and go. And I didn't want my, my money to be sitting there on the website with a bunch of ones and zeros, uh, and they decided to bring the... Uh, the site down and it say uh, you know server 500 error or something like that so <laughs> so yes monitoring the news in Bitcoin definitely will help you yeah I think from here on out most of the uh, people that are left in the market most not all most of the people in the market are gonna have a lot more confidence um, in Bitcoin, at least in the price of Bitcoin, kind of like you, you've kind of expressed this. Um, you know, uh, people who have kind of gone through crashes already, they're like, yeah, well, it's Bitcoin. What else do you expect? But um, whenever Bitcoin has like a huge surge, like it just did, um, you get a lot of new money in the in, in the market, and a lot of that mar money is uh, rather skittish. So whenever there's big, big news, expect big swings. And now I think that people that are kind of left, a lot of the noobs got shaked out or they're starting to believe in it again or something like that. So I think that, like you said, um, the market's probably not going to respond quite as elastic-wise or however, dramatically. I think that's a better word for it. Um, to news... In the near future, but you know, six yeah. months from now, we get pumped up to ten thousand. I think we're gonna have a whole lot of new money in there, and you know, boom, we might see it crash down to five thousand. Who knows? Right on. Hey, so quick test here. Um, we've got a comment in the tradingview.com um, chat box, and uh, I've only recently come into uh, that community. So there's 82 viewers right now, and of course this has gone in and out. People have left and come in. So I'd say over over 100 people have watched the show so far in the last what uh, hour and 20 minutes that we've been on. Um, so here's a quick test. If you're in the the, the tradingview.com chat room, if you could just do a quick little shout out and say uh, I some whatever whatever you want to type in something to reference the Bonavest uh, live hangout, whether you think it's cool or you think it sucks or whatever. The point is you're actually watching the show. And put it in the chat room there, um, just because I, there was one guy in here. He's a good guy, put Dizzle, um, and he said uh, he said this place is as bad as the BTCE troll box and their Twitter tips. Except here, it's people promoting their live hangouts and custom indicators. <laughs> so he's a good guy. There's nothing wrong. He's not he's not trolling me or anything like that. He's a good guy. But uh, it's funny because it, it is kind of true. Because during the uh, Christmas holiday, when I wasn't having the hangouts, uh, there was a couple of people that were in the uh, in the trading view. Uh, ch chart or chat room doing their little um, you know hangouts of their own and, and other things that I don't think were as successful as you guys. Um, you guys have come together. There's eighty of you, eighty of you now, eighty two of you now, and over the course of say a two hour show, I know there's like about 140 to 200 people in an hour, hour and a half, two hours, uh, just because of the the stats I see on YouTube. So there's something different about you guys coming together because usually I have a little bit few more guests on the mic, and I think it was because I screwed up trying to get Google to get the uh, the uh, show going to where I couldn't invite them in here. Usually we got about five or six other people in here talking, uh, and then of course you guys sending in questions and answers. So it's awesome. So it's nice to see that actually other people are, are in here thinking this is a, a good bit of information and it's worth uh, promoting out here and there in different chat boxes. <laughs> uh, let's see, who is this? BTC Highwind. Bonavest says, uh, and I call it doggy. I don't care. You're not going to change my mind. I'm going to call it doggy coin till, till I die. Uh, Bonavest says, "Doggy to the moon, woof woof." <laughs> P 
power to the people. Oh, okay, so Shanti was calling me out that I said click on my avatar to follow me, and uh, they found out that I haven't published any charts. And I was like, yeah, you're right, because I haven't quite figured it out yet. <laughs> and I don't really know what the positive is, because I'm not a big... Uh, there, there's a, a word that, that you can learn now called, it is a chartiste, because you are an artiste at making charts. Therefore, you are a chartiste. Yes, yes, thank you very much. However, I am not a chart artiste, and no, I don't draw pretty charts with so many freaking indicators that uh, it lights up like a Christmas tree, although the one we're looking at now looks pretty pretty awkward. <laughs> but it doesn't have very many uh, indicators all at once. Some, some of these things that you'll see, there's so many freaking arrows and lines that, there's, I, I don't know, I guess you could determine it was going to go up or down depending on you know if you're standing on your head or not. So back to the questions, um, and, and I think this is um, along the line. There's two of them that I've seen here that are along the same lines. This one's from Brett uh, Findlay, who, who watches us quite a few times here, and his question is along the lines of someone else, and I'll try to find that one as well, which is, says, so I currently have about two Bitcoin now. Is it unreasonable to have a goal of 10 Bitcoins by the end of 2014? Okay, so the, the other question had something to do with uh, trading in low volumes, like one Bitcoin and stuff like that. Um, this is good because because I think that uh, a lot of people out there have small bankrolls. You even one bitcoin nowadays is seven. That's almost a thousand bucks at one point. So that's a lot of money. But it it just has a number of one. And the other question had more of how to trade it. And this one is more of is it possible to really go from two bitcoins to ten? So to both questions, I will say it is easily done. It's not easily done. Let me rephrase it. It is possible to be able to do both things: trade with a very small amount of BTC and also be able to change 2 Bitcoin into 10 Bitcoin by the end of 2014. That's possible, completely possible. And, and the reason why I say that is because you just got to kind of change the, your style of, of trading. Um, with a lot of this stuff, if you wanted to, this is a four-hour chart we're looking at. If you literally went to a four-hour chart, you look at Bitcoin Wisdom, you set your EMA settings, so you'll go to Settings and Indicator Parameters, set it for 7 and 30, and then all you do is buy and sell whenever they cross. That's it. That's all you do. Don't do anything else. Just buy and sell whenever they cross. And you'll be ahead. <laughs> because if you look at the way it was you know, before, all it did was go up. So literally from, uh, what is this, like November 3rd to uh, December 1st, so about one month, you would have only had one trade. You would have bought here and sold up there. That, that alone... Would have freaking gotten you, you know, four times what you have, five times what you have. Coming over here, uh, it's going to be a little bit different. You're not going to hit the lowest lows because if you sell here, you're going to buy back over here. Um, but kind of put it in some, some, uh, you know, your own, throw your own set of rules inside of here. So in this case here, if we're dropping dead to the bottom, this is literally at this point we're at five, five eighty-five, let's say six hundred bucks, and we were at a thousand. That's almost half price. You shouldn't have to wait for the EMA to cross to say, you know what, this is a good buy. Half price is a good buy. Let's just buy. If it goes a little lower, no big deal. It just means I have to wait longer. So on a four-hour, even if you had to wait from this point to the point it crosses, you would still would have been waiting about a day. So why not go ahead and say to yourself, well, I'm just going to you know, buy, buy somewhere here, but it's half price. And yeah, if I have to wait an extra day for it to go back up, no big deal. So literally it is possible. I, I, especially if you're talking about a whole nother year, and I think it's going to be one of the biggest years. You know, everyone talks about this last year being big. I think it'll be a big year next year too. So, Brett, definitely good. I apologize. I did a quick calculation while you were talking, and sure. uh, if you were to start with two BTC, and you were to make an average of four percent on your trades, you would need to execute forty-two trades to get above ten BTC. Over a course of a year. Yeah. So for, well, it doesn't matter how much time it takes, but f so exactly. forty. Yeah, forty-two trades you'd have to do at a four percent margin over the course of a year, in order to uh, in order to make that. You know, it, it sounds simple, but you know, if, if you told somebody, you know, can you take two thousand dollars and turn it into ten thousand dollars in a year investing in the stock market? <laughs> That's <laughs> it's a good luck. 
pretty damn ambitious. And, <laughs> and that's the same type of problem that or challenge that the uh, that person was trying to uh, to achieve. Yeah, no, exactly. Hey, Will, welcome to the call. Hey, man. How's uh, it going? It's good. We're going good. We're answering some questions here. So with the, uh, yeah, 4% um, per trade, um, we talked about this in one of the, uh, a couple of different hangouts, but I use, uh, if you don't already know it, the rule of 72. Uh, look that up. And essentially the rule of 72 is if you take the interest rate that you can gain um, and, and divide that into 72, whatever the resulting number is, that's how many of whatever it is you're, you're looking at, whether it's trades, number of days, number of months, whatever it is, that's the number of um, whatever that period is to double your money. It's the rule of 72. So in this case, uh, uh, Wayne was talking about 4%. So if we put in here 4% and we start with $100, uh, I'm going to scan down the ending column here till I hit like 200, which is about right here. And so that tells me that it's actually to double the money, to double your money, it takes 18. Whether that's you do 4% a day, it takes 18 days. If you do 4% a trade, it takes 18 trades. So the rule of 72 will tell you how, how long it'll take to double your money. In, in this case, uh, you, you're trying to do more than you know double your money. You were trying to do something else. So totally different calculation. But if you guys want to have a, a point of reference, check out the rule of 72 and set that up like in a spreadsheet or something. That'll help you out and kind of gauge what the possibilities are. Just get a CD for 18 years. Done deal. Done. <laughs> a CD. Wait a second. Maybe maybe four CDs or something like that with the I don't know, compounded daily or something. But I, last <laughs> yeah. time I saw a CD, it was like I don't know, less than a one percent or something like that. That's right. You probably can only get like one point five at the max. <laughs> yeah. Why why do one percent a year when you can do one percent in a couple of hours, a couple of minutes? <laughs> In fact, where, where are we at on PPC right now? Ah, we're coming down now. I should have sold up there. I saw it at 6, 8, 618. Or no, this is old. Wait a second. Let's look at the real one. Yeah, I missed it. I was too busy talking. So I was going to sell, and the reason why is because... Let's go to my little my nifty difty spreadsheet here. Um, I, I noticed on my sexy charts here, because the reason why I like the sexy charts is because I can look at different... Um, charts at the same time and I can catch little green blips like that right there and it'll catch my eye and then I can look at maybe a different chart to zoom in or something so I noticed there was a big green bar and then I flipped to PPC and it was up at like 618 I think it was a six I think it was 615 when I looked at it so I was like oh cool and it was like I went ahead and went to my spreadsheet and here's PPC 614 so I typed in 614 and that would give me Work with me here. Two and a half percent. So minus the commissions, that would give me two percent. So if I totally exited the trade at that point, yeah, I'd be good. I'd get my two to five percent, which is so I kind of missed it. I was busy talking. I still have plenty of of uh, faith that the PPC will continue to rise over time uh, from where we're at right now. At least enough for me to get to where I really wanted to be at, which was at uh, see on the dollar amount, it was. Uh, 454. See, we're already there. God dang it. I need to stop doing these dang hangouts. You guys are costing me money. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap. Yeah, I missed my, my out right there. That would have been nice. Dang it. And I saw it Adam too. Adam would say, Sound, sounds like you need alerts. Yeah. <laughs> or well, I caught it. Yeah. I mean, I saw it on the sexy the sexy charts and I, I typed in the new number and I was like, oh yeah, perfect. That's exactly what I'm looking for. I might as well, you know, I may not have cashed all of it out, but I probably would have maybe done maybe a quarter or a half out. Um, and then if it did drop, I could buy in lower. But uh, oh well. So why didn't you put an order in? Um, because I didn't I didn't want to I didn't know exactly what I wanted to get out at. And when you zoom out a little bit, like a lot of times people. Um, get stuck with uh, looking at you know the close-up stuff like we use the five and the 15 minute uh, time periods and we kind of forget the the every now and again we got to back out and look at like the four hour charts or we look at the one hour charts to really see you know where's the trend really headed so here we are let's see this is a uh, uh, PBC is pure coin right yeah mm -hmm. uh, so what am I looking? okay this is the 15 minute 
So it looks kind of bad with the 15 minutes dropping down. Now let's back out and let's look at the hourly. So now it doesn't look so bad. Now that we're looking at seeing where we came from, having a dip like this isn't so bad on itself. It depends on if that trend continues. Uh, one of the things I'll add here is this guy right here. This is this is an indicator called SAR. S A R. You can look for that on uh, TradingView.com. And uh, the little dots kind of show you that it's in a trend going up, whereas the dots over the top kind of say that it's a trend going down. It's not a great indicator. It's just merely a little extra blip on the the screen that helped me, uh, you know, quickly see that mm, there might be something pushing it down or pushing it up. It's not a really great indicator, so don't use that on its own. Uh, let's see. Quang, I just happen to see Quang Lei is saying, uh, "How do I see your chart on TradingView?" So I will click his name. That puts it in the chat box, and then I will uh, copy and paste my URL for the chart. And now he should be able to click on that and be able to see what I'm looking at. So anyway, yeah, it did go down. I kind of missed a, a good opportunity to uh, to sell there. But I am uh, I'm still on board with the fact that you know we've been up this high before, and it only looks good that we're up almost as high, if not higher, um, and going sideways. So I think that's good stability. Even if we come down a little bit, as long as we don't go you know, through this cloud right here at uh, 411, 406, as long as we don't go through there, you know, it's not going to plummet. So I'm thinking that's relatively good. I'm still in it. I'm in it to win it. <laughs> okay, it Randy. Win it. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and uh, we're off. Goodbye. Or who? Who be? Who be? Who be? Yes. They're going the wrong way. They're going the wrong way. Yeah, they just had a lot of cell volume. So, uh, which? How many of you guys uh gave Bitcoin for Christmas this year? Me, I did. Actually, gave it to five people. Oh wow! Maybe seven people. Uh, I'm uh I'm thinking about I'm gonna probably buy some Bitcoin now, and that's gonna be my Christmas present for next year. That's a good way to do it. Yeah, this year I only gave Bitcoin to one person. Um, but it was really cool. Um, he took it really well, and he's pretty excited about it. So, pretty rewarding experience. Yeah, I gave um, uh, my son had gotten some uh, gold dollar coins, uh, one dollar coins, and uh, I convinced him that uh, to spend twenty three of that to buy one Litecoin, which was like pulling teeth. And uh, so he bought one Litecoin with his own money. And then, of course, uh, I, I finally got around to asking him, hey, so what do you want for Christmas? Because I hadn't gotten him a present yet because I was traveling. And he said, uh, I don't know, just money. I was like, okay. I was like, so how much you want? And he's like, you could give me some more Litecoin if you want. And I was like, now that sounds like a deal. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I gave him like another 10 Litecoin. So he's, he's loaded up with 11 Litecoin at 22.75. Nice. Do um, he's on BTCE. Did you figure out if he has to verify still? You know what? And that that did concern me. So I actually I was gonna keep them. You know, obviously I was just gonna keep them in my account, tell them they're his. But then I thought, you know, I need to give it to him and and see if he gets curious enough to actually try to trade it, <laughs> even if he loses it all. But um, uh, I decided to open up an account for him and I get sent it to him and I didn't see anything on there that would keep me from. Uh, sending it out, but I don't know. For the, those of you that have, you know, tried doing it without quote being verified, what did you see that it told you you couldn't do it? I've never heard of being verified on BTCE. So the first I ever heard of it was from you. Yeah, and I, and I heard it from someone else. So I don't know personally. I I don't remember ever being verified, and I've never had a problem sending coins or anything. I've never done money, but I didn't have any problems sending coins out of there. Yeah, well, I mean, one of the things I do believe that they've started doing is 
for some accounts, maybe it's not all the time, but if you're going to move a lot of Bitcoin out of a uh, out of BTCE, I think they might put a block on it for or something like that. Um, a friend that I trust told me that. So he told like so when I move my money out of BTCE, I do it at like five bitcoins at a time or something like that. Yeah, I was just looking into getting to going to BTCE because <clears throat> I think Bitstamp has a a fee for withdrawing. It's like 0.2%. Uh, and I have all this Bitcoin that's not in my exchange, not at Bitstamp, and I'm wondering if I should just go to BTCE. Uh, I just wanted to know what I was getting into before I did that. Well, um, real quick, I'll just interject. Uh, say as in the tradingview.com chat did say kind of what I thought, which is it, the whole verification is for fiat deposits and fiat withdrawals. So maybe that it's accurate about it's just for fiat, not for uh, coins. Yeah, that's what I thought. And I mean, if you're in the United States, I mean, funding BTCE directly with fiat, I just think is kind of dumb. Unless you're going to do like... Five hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, uh, you don't do that already, huh? Transferring it over. I I would do. Uh, nice. I, I just don't think there's a better way to do. It's got to be Coinbase to BTCE. Just just do it. But no, if you're trading large volumes, it's a one percent fee. You know what I mean? Like versus a forty dollar wire transfer. So if, even if it's like fifty thousand dollars. You multiply that by 1%, you're talking a $500 fee for using Coinbase plus the spread. Yeah, but there's going to be a fee. There's fees associated with BTCE as well. Like None of their payment processors allow you to get by without some ridiculous fee. Oh. You can't just do an international transfer? Uh, to the payment I didn't look into it. I don't think you can do it directly to BTCE. I don't think you can do it directly to BTCE, I think you have to go through one of their payment processors, and I mean, this was back in April when I was looking, so things have changed 100% pretty much since then, but uh, back then I was, I don't think I could get money into BTCE for less than 5% or something like that, mm -hmm. um, going through the payment processors, and um, that's why even back with Diwalla, when you could actually re legitimately do arbitrage, um, you, you still weren't going to. Uh, that's that's why that 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 price spread exists because it costs so much more to get money into BTCE. So, yeah, I'll have to do some research. If you, I don't really know how to how a SEPA bank account works, I think it has problems with U.S. people. I think SEPA is European. So I agree with you there, and I'm not trading fifty thousand dollars anyway, so I don't have to worry about that. <laughs> yeah, John's yeah. like Bitcoin Daddy Warbucks over here. Who's, who's the soundboard person? Uh, I, I found a soundboard for uh, Kramer, Jim Kramer's. Uh, he, he does Mad Money on uh, CNBC, so I found his little soundboard. So I'm having some fun with that. Nothing like, like thing while live, you know what I mean? There you go. Bye, bye, bye. <laughs> oh my goodness! I don't know. After listening to that guy go off about the housing thing, I, I can't listen to him no more. <laughs> Back in 2008. That was me, man. <laughs> that, that was actually me back in like 2000, 2000. No, yeah, yeah, 2000, my freshman year of college. Or something like that. I, uh, I took out a big loan, basically did what Bonavest did, except I didn't know what the hell I was doing. Oh, the joys of youth. Uh, young and dumb. We all learn. <laughs> That's a special kind of dumb, though. 
<laughs> let's run through some questions real quick. Uh, these are going to be really short answers. I want to clear out some of these uh, questions. Some of them are actually pretty good. We're going to see how many we can close off here in the next uh, five minutes. Let's see. Uh, Erg Ergze, uh, why don't you trade more often on smaller swings inside a single day? Uh, in case uh, you're just joining in, that got plus three, so there must be some other people asking the same question of me. Um, let's see. We Let's recap what I've said. I typically aim for 2 to 5% on every trade. How much smaller do you want me to get? It's 2%. On BTCE, which I think has the lowest fees, it's 0.4% on every uh, you know full in and out trade. So that only gives me, even on a 2%, 1.6% profit. How much smaller do you want me to go? <laughs> That's about as small as I want to get. Um, if I could do more smaller, smaller swings, sure, I, I would if I could and I thought I could get in and out and actually still make it. Uh, sometimes you don't exactly want to go for the the tiny couple of dollars uh, when you could like get out of the money and then you have to buy in higher that wouldn't be good so I do try to I do try to trade uh, um, small swings and I have done that I did it uh, three times in a row on uh, on BTC uh, during the Christmas holiday I traded in, uh, I sold at the 715 here bought at 704 uh, sold at 714 bought in at 704 and I did that three times in a row so that was pretty good. That was like 3% total, I think, after fees and stuff. So three trades for 3%. <laughs> and it actually, it was more work than it was probably worth. But hey, 3% is 3%, and that got me my uh, uh, my one Bitcoin for the day. So Let's see, another quick question. If you place a sell or we already talked about this, so I just want to recap it. I didn't select it and answer it. But uh, if you place a sell order, buy order, price where there are 300 other coins on the same price point, what happens? I was saying that typically I think um, it's supposed to grab the first in, first out. But uh, I've noticed that sometimes it doesn't happen, so you may want to experiment with chopping up your orders into smaller quantities and see if that changes anything for you. Uh, can you? Let's see. I'm gonna skip that one for now. Uh, what would be a good list of sites to monitor to keep a finger on the BTC LTC pulse? That's from Why We Float. Uh, why we float? I don't have that list, you know, that I can just say, "Hey, here's a list," and I don't have some one domain to tell you to go to to get that list. However, it is coming. Um, myself and a few other uh, Bitcoin enthusiasts and those that have been on the the show before are putting together a site, and uh, it should be up actually within the next couple of weeks. So look forward to that. I'll make sure to let you guys know about it. Yeah, I mean, for that, I would just for Litecoin specifically, I would just follow. The BTC news, you know, so, like, Reddit, I found to be really, really good at finding news. So, there's a um, R Bitcoin. You'll find some Bitcoin news because, you know, Bitcoin and Litecoin, they work together. And uh, that, that's what I would do. John, the, the subreddit Bitcoin Markets is also pretty good for news. Yes, I follow that one as well. And there's a subreddit for Litecoin. I think there's even a subreddit subreddit for uh, Doggy Coin too. Yeah, there's another subreddit. I think it's uh, Crypto Markets. That's also pretty good for just general crypto news. I'll have to join that one. You know what's funny is like now. Actually, did you guys hear? There's Cat Coin now. Yeah. <laughs> I I actually like spent a little bit of my Sunday trying to trying to get my Mac set up to, to mine it a little bit because I was just like I just want some cat coin but uh, I, I couldn't figure it out I was just like yeah forget this but yeah like it, it seems like there's like some I don't know like generator or something for these coins because it seems like these coins will pop up They'll come up, there'll be like 10 pools, there'll be a subreddit, there'll be a website, and it's just like nothing to it now. You know what I mean? It's really weird. Well, it just takes one guy with a, a lack of normal responsibility to... It's just like Google+, Plus. you like post, or just like anything. It just takes man hours. I mean, can't well, you I just think... take the, the source code from like Bitcoin and carry it over to something new, change it a little bit? Pretty much. Yeah. I mean, I, I think a lot of these people are just taking Litecoin because Script seems to be more popular, 
And I, I don't even think that they're really even changing anything about it. I mean, like for, you know, PeerCoin and uh, X... Is PeerCoin XPM or what is that one? That's PrimeCoin, right? <laughs> Fess, what are you doing? Uh, someone was asking if I used two monitors. I was like, oh, let's see how, how bad this is going to look. <laughs> pretty so, bad. Pretty bad. Uh, you got a high-quality mic, though. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you can hear me now. I'm far away from the mic, but... Yeah, I hear you like you're next to me. Uh, it's a little bright right now because I have a, a bunch of lights on, but this is the uh, the corporate headquarters, the global headquarters of the Bonavest uh, data center. There's my mixer that I bring the lovely audio to, and two monitors is all I ever use, but um, I am treating myself with a, uh, a six monitor, or I'm sorry, a four monitor setup, and uh, I'm going to put uh, some two monitors up on top there. That way I can actually watch movies and things like that while I'm still looking at charts. <laughs> <laughs> More distraction. I won't show you my all the mess over here, like my uh, my dinner that is getting cold. <laughs> <laughs> it needs more energy drink. Yeah, exactly. I, I go with water. It's a good old water. It makes the body grow. I'm going to step away for a little bit. I'll be back soon. So that was a question from Gore-Tex. He said, uh, do you have two monitors? Yes, I do. And uh, I, don't, I don't know how I would function with just one. There's too many things going on that... Just can't uh, can't use just one monitor. Uh, why we float is saying thanks. No, thank you, sir. Thank you for watching. Uh, right now we've got 74 viewers. Thank you very much for hanging in there with us. Uh, we currently got a couple more minutes to the end of the show, so I've been shortening up the shows to about two hours. Hopefully, uh, it'll allow me to actually get some other things done besides sitting in front of the, the computer. Though sitting in front of the computer tends to make me more money. Um, what is your take on Ripple from Sean? Uh, don't really have a take on Ripple. I, I don't. I don't really trade Ripple. I don't care about Ripple. Uh, but there are some other enthusiasts about that. Why don't you check it out on the Google Plus community uh, under uh, Bitcoin Trading Advice and News? Uh, let's see. Where, where's the boo? That touched yeah. on my vote. What, yeah, just the whole thing about that kind of stuff. Eh, not worried about it. Do you get charged fees on uh, canceled orders on BTCE? I don't know anyone that would charge fees on a canceled order. Fees are usually uh, done when you actually complete an order. So no, you don't get charged fees if you cancel orders. I do it all the time. Um, how do you how do you get on TradingView chat box? Uh, as you can see here, you can see the chat box here, but when you first log in, you may see something like either this, where there's nothing, uh, and on the right-hand side there looks like two little balloon windows and you'll click that, and that'll show the chat one. Or you may see something that looks like this with uh, different stock symbols and stuff like that. Once again, just come over here. It says chats on the right side, and just click there. Uh, noob question, how to join the voice action in Hangouts. That's uh, from Bald Traveler Shan. Uh, for those of you that would like to join in with us, uh, I would love to have you on the show. So the only way that I know that is the easiest way to get it done is to add Bonavest, at Bonavest on uh, Google+. Uh, it's a, uh, a page. Uh, add Bonavest to your circles and send me a message somehow. Let me know that you're interested in being on the show. And what I'll do is I'll add you to a particular circle that I send invites to whenever I do the Hangouts. So whenever I do the Hangouts, for those people that say, yes, I have a working mic, you don't have to have a web camera, but you got to have a working mic and a willingness to talk. You must talk. You can't just take up a seat sitting in here and not talk. <laughs> so if you want to talk, add me to your circles. Somehow send me a message. Let me know you're interested in being on the show, and then I'll add you to that circle, and that way you should get an email invite uh, every time that I set up uh, a Hangout. It'll send out an email invite for you to be able to click the link and get in. Uh, we are limited to 10 people per show, so uh, first come, first serve, and uh, hopefully you would uh, back out at the point uh, you're willing to back out and let someone else take a turn. And if, you, if you're watching this on the replay and you're wanting to know about this noob question about joining the voice action in the Hangouts, scroll back about uh, five minutes and you'll grab it. Uh, let's see. Quang Lei is saying, uh, Bonavist, uh, you set the time interval to 30 minutes instead of an hour now? Nope. Uh, I don't know what you were seeing that was at 30 minutes. I don't think I was doing a 30-minute. Um, I always use... Uh, 
five minute, fifteen minute, one hour, four hour, and one day. It's just typically how I roll. That's how I do it. Uh, let's see what else here. Scrolling through, scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Have you used Trade List for tracking open trades? No, I have not used Trade List. Let's let's put this link up here. See what it looks like. TradeLI.st looks relatively generic. Um, I don't even understand if it's supposed to keep real-time profit loss calculator for crypto day traders. Watch your trading profit margin based on a buy sell order pair as it happens. I don't know, but just staring at this first page, I'm not impressed. But uh, feel free to check it out. You guys, let me know what you think it is. Uh, think, think, think of it, and let me know, and then uh, I'll spend more time reviewing it. But it's a uh, trade uh, li dot st trade list. Check that out. Let me know what you think about it. I'm not, I'm not sold on it just by looking at the first page. I don't understand it. <laughs> Uh, see, uh, Tom R. has a suggestion. He says, I use this one for live LTC order book. Let's see if it is live. Well, hold on a second. It's a ping. So is this one of those pings that, like, updates? Let's see here. Let's take a look. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's not a... Uh, yes, that is the order, like, the order book and shows this is my sexy charts. So I am very familiar with these charts. Um, but... Uh, it doesn't have the number, the numerical order book is what I want to see. This is good for being able to see walls and so forth, but sometimes uh, when I want to place orders, I want to see the actual number. I want to know exactly how many coins there are and just be able to hit the numbers. So if you come across a live order book with actual numbers, um, yeah, let me know. I'm still looking for that. Oh, way at the bottom, I find that one question I was looking for. Nikolai Nikolai was saying, I'm an art student, and I found such an interest in trading. I have just about one BTC. How would you suggest me to start? Trade it. Uh, was it sell high, buy low? There you go. doesn't matter if you got one BTC or you got 100 BTC. It's same principles. Just look at percentages. Don't worry about the dollar amounts. And definitely just grow BTC. Yeah, if you're interested in the long the long haul, I mean, try to increase the number of BTC you have. Just like any uh, share in a stock or something, you always want to have more shares. That way, after you build up your shares, every dollar that 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 company price increases. Same thing with the Bitcoin price. For every dollar Bitcoin rises up, the more Bitcoins you have is another extra dollar. Let's see. Uh, I think this is a Asian prepper, uh, and I guess it got pushed down to the bottom here. He uh, earlier in the uh, show, I mentioned something about Asian prepper, and I said I didn't know if Asian prepper meant like prepper, like a zombie apocalypse type survivalist kind of thing, or because uh, I had never heard of an Asian prepper. That's new to me. So uh, I think this is him um, on G plus prison or freedom. Uh, let's see if I can put this up. There you go, because I know it's something. He's a bit of an enthusiast here, so I'm sure he doesn't mind the uh, free. Uh, the free plug here. So prison or freedom? Don't quite get the part, but uh, he does have. I didn't. I remember clicking on him uh, on his YouTube. So he's got some YouTubes about uh, different currency stuff, and uh, he talks about a bunch of different things as well as uh, bitcoins and things like that. So Asian prepper. All right, now I know the connection. Prison or freedom? I've actually seen you put uh, posts in the the shows. Uh, I thought before somewhere on Google Plus, I had seen something maybe in a Bitcoin uh, community. So he says, not zombie prepper, just be prepared in advance for what you need to do in life and whatnot, uh, or and not wait till the last minute. The time to sharpen the axe is before you go into the woods. Amen, brother. I actually watched some of his videos. They're pretty good. What's that? I've watched some of his videos before. I think they're pretty good quality. Oh, yeah. Yep, definitely. Looks good from here. <laughs> And I think that's an, about it for all the, most of these questions here. Uh, oh, yeah, Kyle's asking, are you only invested in uh, PPC and LTC? Um, no, I throw money at some of the other ones every once in a while, but strictly at a gamble. It, there's there's no trading it based on charts or indicators. It's just a strict gamble of, hey, it's lower than it's ever been. Why not throw some money at it now? 
So PPC, I mean, um, LTC and BTC are the ones that I actually trade with all kinds of charts and indicators and things like that, but everything else is just kind of a, eh, strikes the fancy and you throw some money at it and see what happens. The only one uh, I'm kind of really steering clear of right now is uh, Feathercoin because, I mean, it's just, the, the order book is just so thick, you know? Is it really? Oh, take a look at it on BTCE. I didn't notice that it was thick, I mean... Well, it's what I mean by that is just like, you know, you have to, it, it would need a lot of volume to move. Really? Yeah, check it out. Well, I mean, are you talking about, like, the numbers of Feathercoin, or are you talking about BTC? So, like, right now, it looks like to move B, uh, move it from 0. 0.00046 to 0. 0.0045, some of you would have to um, sell, like, 31 Bitcoins. Yeah, like 4,000. Yeah, yeah. Here, here's the list on the, the screen here in BTC. So yeah, there's BTC thirty one fifty. It is, it is. You're right. That's a lot thicker than I've seen before. I mean, I could literally try to buy into Feathercoin with everything I have, and it wouldn't move uh, one. You, know? you and me both. We could both go in and and <laughs> barely move it one. Yeah, that I I agree with you. That is pretty thick. That is very strange. Huh? And it and it's deep. I mean, it's not like someone just stacked up a bunch of stuff here in the near area. I mean, if you just scroll back, it continues to stay in the 20s and 30s. Hell, there's 80 right there. That is really crazy. The prices and profitability of mining Feathercoin have been steadily going down for quite a few weeks now. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, I've had a lot of good luck with Feathercoin, but lately I don't even touch it because of how just what you said. There's just too much shit there, and it doesn't move. And that, and that may be the case, is that you've got all these miners, and now they're wanting to sell, and nobody's buying, so it just kind of sits there. Whatever happened with Quark? It seemed like, I mean, I never had a lot of faith in it, but it seemed like it had a lot of momentum, and there was people hyping it and talking about all kinds of great things were going to happen, and then those people just went silent. The, the dump went. The, the dump happened. I mean, all that was was somebody pumped it up a little bit, and they got a little advertising to keep some people in there, maybe push it a little further, and then that's it. I mean, the jig was up. People exposed it for being like pre mined or something like that, or maybe they, uh, maybe it wasn't pre mined. Maybe it was just slandered, you know. But uh, yeah, it just seems like Quirk is kind of. Done. I don't know. I mean, that in itself is remarkable, I guess, in a, in a certain sense. But I just find it amazing that all of these people who were hyping it and saying things uh, uh, about it that were positive, there's been no blowback. There's been no consequences. They're just sort of like on to the next. They made all these predictions. They said all these things, and then nothing ever came of it. Well, that's crypto, too. I mean, that's why you have to be really, really skeptical about uh, who you do business with. Like, I'm looking at, uh, what is that, Alpha T um, site, and, you know, I am very uncertain about them. You know, do I have the money to throw it at uh, an ASIC Litecoin miner? Yes. Um, but, you know, I'm very skeptical of it. I, I'm doing my research. I, I like it. I like what I see, but I'm extremely unsure about it. I do not know whether or not they're legit. Um, with KNC Miner, uh, when I was doing my research on them, I, I liked their plan. They had a good plan, I, and I was able to research the company that they partnered with, and I was able to actually see other companies that bought from them I saw like demonstrations of other ASICs that they had made for different purposes that other companies had bought. And I was like, oh, okay, well, this is a legitimate company, has 10 years' experience, and now they're getting into to Bitcoin. And that's why I went all in with KNC. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm very skeptical. Uh, like, there was one, I didn't even know the name of it. It was something about like crypto, something. And they were advertising like a one tera hash machine back near April, 
And uh, they were just a complete scam. I tracked them back to a, a Kickstarter scam where they stole $200,000 from uh, Kickstarter people. And, um, yeah, yeah. So a lot of scammers in Bitcoin, you got to be very, very cautious because there's really no consumer protection. And, you know, with mining, uh, like, who is it, Cointera and Hashfast, uh, you know, I think those are honest companies, but they're not delivering. You know, they, they bit off a little bit more than they could chew, and uh, their customers are going to suffer a little bit because of it. So, very, very tough. You know, it seems to me like if I was one of those companies, I would build the miners, mine with them for a short period of time while it's most profitable, and then once that period of time was over, then turn around and, t and sell them to customers. Uh, a lot of people believe that's what uh, Avalon and Butterfly Labs did. All right, gentlemen, I am uh, going to be closing down this show here. I just want to wrap it up. Um, I did get a, a something from Opet in the uh, Trading View uh, chat. He mentioned about FTC that some whale has been locking it down for three weeks now. So I guess there's somebody, and I'm saying whale, that could easily be somebody that has no money but has been mining it for forever and ever and decided now was the time to throw their coins up for sale. So kind of like what we were talking about. Um, but essentially, uh, we're ending the night with 67 viewers. Thank you for tuning in, guys. Uh, if you're wanting to stay in touch and know about the next Hangout, be sure to connect with me at, at Bonavest on Twitter. I'm pretty good at uh, sending out the links ahead of time there, as well as uh, you can join our Google Plus community. Uh, just go to Google Plus Communities and search for Bitcoin Trading Advice and News. Uh, we have lots of good posting of information and things that uh, other member community members come across and post up on there. Um, as well as, hell, we're all kind of all inside these different chat rooms. We've got uh, the TradingView.com chat room. We've got uh, the Sexy Chats chat room at uh, BTCCharts.com. Um, and we also have our Coin Authority uh, temporary chat site, which is chat.coinauthority.io. Uh, so feel free to catch up with all of us in there and uh, continue the conversation. Uh, and this is it. It's uh, two hours into it, and we're signing off here. Appreciate you tuning in. And that is the end. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. <laughs>